What's up? Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. The biggest, baddest fight card of the year for us this year. This thing is sold out in Anaheim. Who has the first question? It's good to be at a normal press conference again. For, for DC, please. DC, this is a, a huge fight for a lot of different reasons, but put the rivalry aside and all the emotion and all that. Talk about what this fight means to you for your, your legacy, because a lot of people think it all boils down to this. No matter what you've accomplished in two weight divisions, if you don't beat John Jones, history won't be kind to, to you and how you stand in, in all time. Well, I mean, I think in time, uh, the result of, a, of one fight will not overcome everything I've done in this sport. But the reality is, for me, I do need to win this fight. Because if you, if you look at all the things that I've done in my career, uh, I've done it all outside of beating John Jones. It's the last thing for me to do. And yeah, it's very important. I need to win this fight on Saturday night uh, as much as anybody else sitting up here. Thanks, DC. For you, John, you've kind of had an interesting demeanor the last week or so. The interview with Brian Stan, the phone call, you've been very calm, collected, you know, keeping yourself reserved. But I wonder, right now, you know, Daniel Cormier is a few feet away. The championship belt's a few feet away. What are the emotions that are inside of you, the thoughts that are inside of you right now? Man, I'm just excited to be here. Guys, first of all, thank you guys so much for being here. Yes, 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 California, what's up? Um, I'm just glad to be here, man, I'm grateful, man. It's, it's been a long road to get back to where I am today. A lot of effort, a lot of things that you guys haven't seen. Uh, I've, I've done a lot to get back here today. I'm just so excited to be here and uh, got a super great feeling, man. Done everything right, got the strongest team around me that I've ever had before. And uh, we believe we're gonna get the job done like we always do. And John, just a quick follow-up, a lot of people feel like they're seeing the most real version of you that they've ever seen. You know, not worried necessarily about how you look, how you come off, how people are, you know, perceiving you. Do you feel that's accurate? And is that a conscious decision? Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm at a pretty good place in my life, what, who I am. I, I just kind of learned not to give a fuck, and it feels great. Thanks, John. If I could quickly for Tyron. Tyron, I know that you were, you know, kind of looking for some other fights out there, you know, as a, as a businessman, you know, look, your legacy, looking for other things. But I wonder, as a martial artist, fighting a guy like Damian Maia, you know, preparing for somebody like him who's so good at one aspect of the game, was it exciting for you at all? Once this was the fight that you had, did you enjoy preparing for it? Um, I'm not going to say a lot of you think I enjoy someone jumping on my back and constantly defending the shots, but that's what you do. You know, it makes me a better martial artist because... Had I not been presented an opportunity to compete against him, I would have dug down deep in the jiu-jitsu background, learned how to defend, learned how to um, get ready for all these different positions, and the same thing with Stephen Thompson. So um, in hindsight, it actually is making me a better martial artist. You know, I've all, I was always open to this fight. I was, you know, it's not like he won seven fights in a row and he came by surprise, like I didn't know he was coming up. So um, I think that's, you know, I wouldn't say that's 100% factual that, you know, I wasn't interested in fighting him. I just wanted to fight. I didn't want to take a break. I didn't want to wait until the end of the year. And I felt like as a challenger, you step up and you fight. And that's why we fight um, Saturday. Thanks, Tyron. And just lastly for me, if I could, for Damien, please. Uh, you know, you said when you won the fight earlier this year to, to get this, you said you wanted to wait a while. You had some things to do and some things to take care of. Now we're fighting, you know, right now. I wonder, you know, kind of what sacrifice did you, did you have to make to get here? And, and what guarantees do we have that, that you're 100% the best Damien Maia that you can be here? You know, when we get the, the notice for the fights five weeks before, I was kind of wondering. But then, you know, we were with our team and we talked and we said, this can be, you know, the only chance that we have. Let's take this chance. And thanks God, you know, I'm very good. You know, that the camp went really well. We are afraid that we knew we couldn't make any mistakes in this camp. We couldn't. When you have like a 10 week camp, you can make some mistakes and correct during the way. But right now for this camp, you couldn't. Actually, we had like four weeks of training and, and the, the fight week. So, you know, that's what we did. It was very intense, but everything worked really well, you know, and my team was great and everything was, was great. Over here. This question is for John. Hey, John. Uh, you're 30 now. So I'm wondering, uh, as you turn 30, I guess on the 19th of July, what would you say about your 20s? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it somewhere in between? How would you look back on that, that decade in your um, life? I don't really like you, Luke, so I'm not going to answer your question. Right. Uh, down here in front. 
Down here in front, uh, Chris. Chris, down here. This is your first uh, fight week in the UFC, fighting at 145 pounds. How much easier is this week for you now you're fighting at your true weight? I think it's easier. I say hello for everybody. Come see me here. And the easier part, I think I, I, my camp, I did really happy. You know, I think he cut from back to my division. I think he changed my mood every day. I go train happy and my, my, my team, team really happy with me. And you know, I feel great. I feel great. I feel ready. And Saturday, Saturday night is going to be my day. Great stuff. Thank you. Tonya, Tonya down here as well. To your right. Hello. Um, you know, this is your first fight in the UFC as well. How much of a bigger deal does this feel than, uh, I guess, fighting an Invicta? And how excited are you for Saturday night? Uh, to be honest, I'm just happy to be here. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, this is definitely my time in my career. I think I'm at the top of my game. Uh, I think the beginning of my career was like, you know, it took me a while to catch on and figure out what kind of fighter I am. And, and I, I definitely think this is the right time in the right spot. And, and I feel like I'm in the right weight class at 135, and if you're in the right weight class, you can go down 10 pounds, you can come up 10 pounds either way, and, and I think that um, I'm definitely willing to do that. I just want to work, so here I am. Great stuff, thanks. And uh, lastly, for Daniel, uh, straight in front of you, sir. Um, you know, so much has been said since uh, UFC 200, since that fight got canceled. You've used, I guess, the term junkie with John a few times. Um, you know, in your heart of hearts, do you truly believe that he has cheated and tried to get an, an advantage over you using illegal substances. Well, the other day, uh, John about cried on the press conference because I had accused him of using steroids. But if I do feel he did try to cheat, yeah, I do. Why can I not say what I feel? I can say whatever I want. If I believe it in my heart, then I will say it. And yes, I do believe he's done it for a long time. So I don't Bullshit. care. <laughs> You've got a pretty loud voice there, buddy. Good job. You go, Johnny uh, <laughs> How long do you think I've been doing steroids? What's that? How long do you think I've been doing steroids? Well, you're probably about... Well, you've earned a title fight, you know, so I imagine you're about 3-0 in the UFC, so those first few fights. Ovent St. Prue, Guzmao, and Forrest, Forrest Bonner, or whatever his name is. What's that guy's name that he beat? Was, so yeah, Stefan Bonner. When Stephen I, Bonner, those three fights is when you didn't do steroids. But when, when everything I, else in the middle is when I, uh, eliminated. When I, uh, when I started powerlifting uh, four days a week, and uh, I started, you know, with these chicken-ass legs with my bad genetics, I uh, started deadlifting 600 pounds, squatting 500 pounds. You saw it was in full effect. So how did I get away with that? You did, I'm not saying you, you did it last year versus Ovent St. Prue. You were clean last year when you fought with Vince St. Prue. When I was the biggest ever. I, that's I, why I you. That's clean? why you look, like you look. How do I look? You're a bum. That's why you look like a bum last time. How, how do I look, DC? Hey, all that. That's all just. Hey, listen. That's all. That's all just for show. That's all just for show. Who, I don't who, care who about that. Who looks like a junkie here today? Hey, I. Hey, that, that's just all for show. Look at you this can guy's show face. your six pack. Who looks like a junkie? You can here just today? show your six pack. That's fine. That's all Who for sure. Who looks show. like a junkie here today? I look like a. I'm you look not, like I'm a not crackhead with a suit on. Was that? You look like a crackhead with a suit on. I could look like a crackhead with a suit on, but I've never been a crackhead like you though. <laughs> so you can say I look like one, but I've never been one. I've never been one. Next question. Question is for John. Uh, John, you've obviously been largely inactive for the majority of the last 30 months. It wasn't really your choice, but what are some of the benefits, both uh, physically and mentally, taking the time off? Oh, man, it's been awesome. You know, I, uh, I got thrown into, uh, became a multimillionaire when I was 23 years old. And that can, do to, uh, that can do a lot to someone who's never prepared for that type of lifestyle. You know, I grew up with uh, the bare minimum, and, and then I find myself uh, with the whole world in the palm of my hand, with all types of options. And I didn't do right by it. And, um, and uh, you know, I think, I think my talent and, and, and my brand, it grew faster than my character and, and me as a person. And so having this last two years pretty much off, I really got to take a step back and look at my career and look at this organization as a fan, look at where I was in the position. And, and what I've concluded was, 
Um, I didn't take anything uh, seriously. I mean, I was winning fights while partying, right? And, uh, and I just started to think like, you know, I just, I just started taking everything for granted and I started making mistakes. So um, it's been great to take a, take a step back and to reevaluate things and prioritize and, uh, and to realize how much this sport means to me, how much this position means to me. And uh, today I feel like a, a much better version of myself I feel like, uh, I just feel great. I feel rejuvenated. Re Thanks, guys. And then the next question is for Daniel. Uh, Daniel, even before you held the belt, you were always uh, an ambassador for the sport, a, a true sportsman. So what can we make of your pivot and shift on social media to change the conversation from athletics and competition to male genitalia? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, we've... Uh, one thing that we have done over social media is exactly what we do when we're in each other's presence. It's just another platform to really get after your opponent. And um, you know, he kind of put it out there that that's what, he, that's what it was, and that's why he didn't fight last year, so why not make fun of it? I mean, he makes, he makes, fun, of, he makes fun of some of the things that I have done, you know, like the Olympics and the uh, NCAA tournament and all these accomplishments that I've had in my life. And it's fine, because it's all out there. So if it's out there, then it's fair game. So yeah, I make fun of his uh, limp noodle. <laughs> <laughs> and then just for Dana. Dana, some people might point to comments that you made uh, not too long ago that John would not headline a card. What ultimately led you to go in this direction with John and Daniel at the top of the card? Well, obviously, when that stuff happened at UFC 200, I was, I was upset. I was upset with John Jones and, uh, you know, the whole situation. So, you know, this is the first time John and I have seen each other or talked in, in a year. So. <laughs> hey guys, question for John Jones. John, you had a lot of challenges leading into UFC 197. Obviously, uh, you were in jail recently before the fight. Then there was obviously your mother's helps, health, something that would have weighed in on your mind. And then leading into 182, there were some challenges as well. How do you feel leading into this fight? Um, has it sort of affected you differently? And is it fair to say this is the first time in a long time that you've gone into a fight with a, a fairly smooth road? Yeah, I feel great. I feel like I answered this question already. But, you know, I feel great. Like I said... Uh, I have a really strong team of people around me right now. Um, my coaches, uh, Roberto Alencar, uh, Brandon Gibson, Greg Jackson, Israel Martinez, uh, Mike Wingojohn, uh, Mike Benefield, Devin Clark. Man, all the guys that are in my life are leaders. They're, they're leaders, they're extraordinary men, and uh, super grateful to be surrounded by such a strong group of people. Um, I feel supercharged. Everything's going so smooth. Our energy is in a great place. And uh, I got a feeling, man, we're going to take this great energy into the fight on Saturday night and absolutely dominate. Dominate. So I feel great. I feel really great. I'm excited to prove these words to be true. I don't want to spoil your good energy, but at the end of the trailer, uh, you utter some powerful words, which are, I need to win this fight. I need to get my life back. I'm just curious, how closely is, is the belt and being the champion tied to your life and your identity? And if for whatever reason that wasn't to happen, how would that affect you and I guess your life? Well, I, uh, like I said, I won the belt when I was 23. I decided to be a martial artist at age 19. And I do associate uh, my life with being a world champion. I mean, the majority of my adult life, has, I've been a world champion athlete. And even without the belt, I know that I'm a champion for the rest of my life. Um, but yeah, I say I need to get my life back because a big part of me feels incomplete without it. I've heard Daniel say things like, you know, I'll be fine uh, if I lose this belt. And uh, it just shows me a lot about his attitude. I also heard him say something about, uh, he said uh, when he was doing an interview with Matt Serra how he was preparing himself against Ryan Bader to, to lose a championship level fight, like he knew it was coming or it was possible. I don't think like that, you know. I really identify myself as a champion, and, and a champion without his belt, it's like, a, it's like a knight without a sword. I gotta have it, and so I'm gonna get it. 
Thanks, John. One more question for Daniel. Uh, a year ago, or a little over a year ago, you were in a similar position. You were doing the press conference for UFC 200. Uh, John Jones and yourself were on stage, and then obviously the fight didn't happen. Uh, how are you feeling now, leading into just a few days away from Saturday, and have you sort of allowed yourself to, to get excited and accept the fact that it, it is going to happen? You know, um, he's saying all the right things, seems to have done the right things. I mean, I don't really pay that close attention to him, like he does to me, obviously, but... Uh, he's saying the right things. He seems to be doing the right things. So there's no reason for me not to think that my business partner will show up on Saturday night because we've done this so many times. This is the fifth time. How many times can we do this without actually fighting? One is not enough. Saturday night, we get to fight. Hey, John and Daniel, for both of you guys, I mean, clearly there's a lot of hatred in the air between you guys. Do you take all of that into the octagon, like right when the fight starts, or do you need to separate yourself from it a little bit so you've got your wits about you during the fight? Well, I mean, last time I, I thought I brought a lot of that into the octagon with me. It served me no good. I mean, you have to change things. If you're going to, if you make a mistake, you learn from it. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, not only the training had to be intense in terms of the fight, but also the mental preparation too. And mentally, I feel better than I've ever felt. So I won't take any of this animosity into the fight. I've always said time and time again, man, if there's issues between you and a person and it's issues outside of just this sport, then you can do that anywhere. It doesn't have to be to the confines of the octagon. So if there are issues between John and I that need to be addressed after Saturday, then they'll get addressed. As far as the uh, dislike for Daniel, uh, when it comes to me, it, it gives me added motivation to do the things that I'm certain he's not doing. For us to both, both be clean athletes, um, when I say clean, I'm saying just, uh, mainly the steroids, right? Um, I know for a fact that a 39-year-old that a cannot possibly keep up with a 29-year-old a um, when it comes to training your ass off every day. So when I do that fourth workout, every day. I know, for, I know for a fact that this injury prone guy over here is probably not training four times a day because he's probably believing in the power of recovery. So it gives me the, uh, it gives me that added motivation to just get my four workouts done. And uh, as far as the hatred going into the octagon, Daniel's already said the first time uh, we fought that the adrenaline and, or that big fight feeling took over him and, and, and that was part of the reason why he lost. I find that interesting. A guy who wrestled in the NCAAs, a guy who wrestled in the Olympics, a guy who, who fought for the Strike Force Championship. How could a guy with so much combat experience allow butterflies to be a reason why he lost the first fight? All right? So um, it just goes to show, man, by the words that comes out of his mouth. One of my favorites, you want to know what's in a man's heart, you listen to the words that comes out of his mouth. And he's weak. He's weak. And so I'm just excited to prove that again. Dana, with this card, uh, with this fight leading the card, have you looked at UFC 214 from top to bottom and compared it to some of the best cards you got you ever put on? In well, the UFC? It's one of the best cards ever in, in the history of the company, and obviously the best card of the year. <clears throat> and last thing, um, DC and Cyborg, um, the weight issues. Are there going to be any going into Friday? Are you guys both going to be okay? I uh, I feel pretty good. But um, we'll bring a towel just in case. <laughs> yeah, that's just not funny, I bro. I feel great. Technically, you I... should have gave 20% of your purse to your opponent. Technically, you should have gave 20% of your purse to your opponent because you did not make weight. You oh, I will made forever weight. Be, you can forever hey. say that you are the 206.2 pound champion hey, of the world. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, listen, there are a lot of things that you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be sitting up here right now for all the shit that you've done. So you sit up there on your high horse, how the fuck can you judge? You have no room to judge nobody. You sit there with your fucking mouth shut before I walk over there and smack the shit out of you. Ooh, but well, we all know he won't do that, right? Uh, you, hey, are you mad, Daniel? The truth will get set there, you free. If I don't get there, you've seen you time and time again can something always will say get there. confidently, that I am the only ever 206.2 pound champion of the world. You'll always have that title. Uh, John, this is actually a follow-up to that. Um, uh, hold on a second. Go, go ahead, Cyborg, answer the question. 
Uh, do you know have uh, the last two fights? I have high time in you know, a catch weight, and the one forty-five is my division. I want to show all my fans why I have ten years in the field and twelve. And then Saturday, I'm gonna be amazing show and be violent, be cyborg. Go ahead. Um, John, this is a follow-up to the question about Daniel's weight. Um, you've talked a fair bit about that. Um, if he does come in overweight, w will you still fight? Oh, yeah, he's not escaping me that easily. I will definitely still fight, and I will take 20% of the chump change he's making. Oh, it's not chump change. It's not chump change. Um, and then, Dana, just because of the history of us getting close with this fight in the past, is there any continuous... Speak up a little. Go ahead, do it uh, again. Sorry, just because of the, the history with these two, we got close last year. Is there any contingency in place in case something does go wrong between, uh, with them over the next couple days? When, in like 10 minutes? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Me, I hope. Uh, this question is for Tyron. Uh, so once again, you find yourself defending your belt amongst um, a big show that's taking up a lot of the promotional attention. Uh, are you, do you take comfort in kind of laying back and just letting the, uh, the circus play out? Or are you looking forward to the day where the attention is focused squarely on you? Everybody has their time and season, and um, I've been shown to put on the best damn shows when I'm on big cards. So, um, if you look at if you look at the history of, of me fighting, whenever it's a huge fight card and people are going out there and you know the attention's on the main event, I always find a way to steal the show. So I plan on going out there, putting on a great performance, um, you know, getting getting rid of Damian Maya and record breaking time. That way, I can watch the main event. Uh, question for DC. Uh, a lot has been made with your, your training, like your training partner, Kane Velasquez. Uh, and the last time you were scheduled to fight John, Kane was on the card. Mm -hmm. So you, you obviously got to train with him. And given Kane's recent health situations, how much was he actually able to help you in camp? You know, he was there uh, as a coach at times. On Fridays, he would come in and spar. So I've had him to train with. Everything's going great, man. There, there are no reasons as to why I should not get my hand raised on Friday, on Saturday. So, it does. It, everything is in order for me. I like, uh, I like that he's so sure. I like that he's confident. I like that he feels good, because when I turn him back, then we can't retract some of the stuff that we say in the press conference on Wednesday. Just a quick question for Dana. Dana, just over here. Um, people are trying to figure out what's next for Tyron or Damien after this title fight um, on Saturday. People are thinking GSP maybe, or is he still fighting Bisping in November? So can you clarify who's in contention to fight for the belt next? Well, let me, it's funny you asked me that question because, uh, you know, that is the plan as of right now. Whoever wins this fight fights GSP. But GSP's people... <laughs> are here today to speak to me, so we'll see what happens. We'll see how that goes. That is the plan as of the last time that I talked They're to you. They're going to ask to fight Bisping because George don't want to fight me. What'd you say? They're going to ask to fight Bisping because George doesn't want to fight Listen, the Bisping ship has sailed. Uh, it's gone. It's, if you win on Saturday, it's, it's, it's going to be you, pal. It's just a question for Daniel. Uh, Daniel, when you look back on the first fight, do you feel like you've underestimated John Jones's wrestling ability in that first fight? And do you think that's probably one of the things that kind of cost that one? No, I did. You know, I, I, uh, I, uh, I didn't think that he could take me down as he did. Um, also, it wasn't, it wasn't just that. I mean, he did a, a good job of, of working my body very early in the fight. You know, he, he stayed the course over 25 minutes. There were a lot of things that he did well and things that I didn't do very well to lose the fight. But in terms of the wrestling, uh, he did do a little bit better than I, I imagined. And also, I, I didn't really defend as hard as I could at times. You know, when he pushed me against the fence, I would kind of relax in there, as you saw me do with Rumble Johnson, uh, and he would lock his hands. He's got long arms. A guy like that locks his hands behind your back. It's going to take you down most times. So uh, I did underestimate him a little bit. But again, you learn from every experience. And these are things that I will not do on Saturday night. Just look shout out, shout them. out to Izzy Style Wrestling, Martini High School, one of the baddest motherfucking wrestling coaches in the game. You're the man, Izzy. Just last question for Diana. I feel like there's this um, 
sort of negative thing going around on the internet where people think you're not a fan of Damien Maia. So, so can you just let us know what you think of Damien and what he's been able to do in his last few How fights? would the internet know what I think of Damien Maia? Well, they feel like they know a lot about you, the internet. So I just want to get it straight on from you. the internet, ever. Um, no, I, I, I like Damien Maia. You know, Damien stepped up and took that fight last time. We told him if he did, he would be next in line for the title shot. So, you know, we're getting ready. And, and the champ says... Well, I'm not waiting for him. I, I, want, I want to fight in Anaheim. So, uh, you know, if he wants that shot, he's got to take it or give me somebody else. You know, th there's a lot of other things that go into this whole equation when, uh, when fights are being made. You know, um, absolutely. N Damian Maya is one of the nicest guys in the world. If you don't like fucking Damian Maya, there's something wrong with you. So I, I have no, no, not even close have I ever had a problem with Damian Maya. Question for Tonya. Caroline Pierce here from BT Sport. Um, there's not many women that have been willing to step into the, the octagon or into the ring with Chris Cyborg. You didn't hesitate to take the fight, but how do you prepare for someone like her, her power, and who do you bring in, male or female, to deal with that? Well, obviously we're both Invictus champions. I, I feel like I'm a champion. I'm, I'm top in the world, and, and I'm the best one in my weight class. That's what you got to believe. So um, I'm willing to take any fight. I'm here to work. I'm here to prove to myself that I'm the best, and, and I got to fight everybody in the way. I don't, I don't care what it, what it takes or what I got to do. So um, training partner-wise, uh, I train with guys and girls. So I think that you get different competition when you train with girls. You can't just train with guys. So I, I mix it up a little bit. But uh, and I train with real competition. I don't train with guys that are so much better than me. They shut me down, and I can't actually work. So I train with real competitive training partners, and, and I think that's what – brings out the best in me, and I think I'm going to put on a show and, and prove a lot of people wrong and, and uh, hopefully come out with the win. Thank you. And question for Dana as well. Just coming off the May Mac press tour and now into such a big fight card, UFC 214, how are you feeling in terms of just where the UFC is at right now and, and the attention on the sport? Everything's good. Um, you know, uh, our, our, uh, our role in that thing, you know, I didn't really want much of a role as far as production goes and, and, the, app, and the actual fight. So, you know, Team Mayweather and, and Showtime will handle all of that. So we're, we're, we're doing what we do. We're just we're, we're focusing on UFC. Obviously, it's a big fight. And uh, I'm excited for it, and I'm excited to put it behind me. And just a last question. Um, you said there wasn't a contingency plan if, if, for whatever reason, the fight doesn't happen between John and Daniel. But um, we've got Jimmy Manor obviously fighting on the card as well, who, who seems to think that maybe he could be that stand-in. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, he's here for a reason. <laughs> it, wasn't, uh, it, it, it wasn't just a coincidence that he ended up on this card. So, yes, truth. Okay. That is truth. Thanks. I'll take one more question. Well, I'll give it to you then. Um, Dana, there's been a few reports. Um, easy. There's been a few reports the last few days um, about John Jones and uh, Brock Lesnar saying they would like to fight each other. In, in your mind, is, um, is that realistic? Is that a fight you would like to put together? It's crazy. I don't even know where that thing came from or how it started. But uh, I, first of all, I haven't even... Uh, oh, believe me, I haven't talked to Brock Lesnar. I don't know. So... Um, I mean, I don't know if you've talked to Brock Lesnar, but I haven't talked to Brock Lesnar. He said, not recently. Me neither. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I'm telling you right now, I have not talked to Brock Lesnar. Okay, it sounds like nobody believes me, but it's true. Um, I have not talked to Brock Lesnar. And according to John, right now, he just said he hasn't either. I'll deal with, Dan I'll deal with uh, Daniel, and then I'll deal with Brock Lesnar. <laughs> All right, we're going to get this out of here, and I will square these guys off. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it, everybody.